Well, before we begin our devotion this evening, I just had a quick message for you. Uh, we're always trying to find ways to improve our uh, quality of our broadcast. And uh, uh, this week we, uh, through trial and error, have stumbled on to a, uh, uh, a better way to record our music, the hymns that we play. Uh, as a part of the service, the ones you sing along with that have the words on. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, I, I hope you can tell the difference tonight as you listen to it, but just know that we're always trying to do what we do better. And uh, uh, one of the things i found with this is uh, in listening to these services, if, uh, if you have headphones uh, like the ones I'm wearing or, or earbuds or, or something uh, that get the sound more directly into your ears. The quality is much better. I'm sure most of you already know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But just in case you're not, uh, you're like me and not one of those real techie folks, uh, uh, you, I think you'll find uh, we've really upgraded the recording uh, not the opening and closing songs uh, uh, but the uh, the actual music that we sing during the service so so I hope you find those changes uh, welcome and uh, let us know what you think well welcome to uh, sanctuary lakeside churches Wednesday evening devotions. It is November 9th, 2022, and uh, we're just glad you're here with us this evening. Uh, we have some uh, good music for you this evening and uh, some prayers. We've got quite a few prayer requests this week, and uh, uh, and then uh, some scripture and a, and a devotional message for this evening that I hope you'll find uh, uh, useful and uh, helpful in your lives. Uh, so without any uh, further delay, we'll move right into our first hymn and then we'll be back for some prayer. So, uh, and remember, sing along.
Well, we hope you enjoyed that uh, that hymn this evening and uh, that you found that meaningful and that you were able to sing along. We try and post the words because uh, I know we enjoy singing along with them here, so I uh, thought that might be helpful to you. Uh, we have uh, a number of prayer requests uh, this evening. Um, some of them are repeat but ongoing and serious uh, requests. So we're going to, We normally we don't repeat requests, but uh, I think there are a couple of special instances, several special instances here uh, this evening. So moving right along, uh, uh, Chelsea, uh, we prayed for her last week, a uh, victim of a, a terrible car accident, uh, has been in intensive care, is now undergoing multiple surgeries to uh, repair uh, a leg and to treat some infection that she's had. Chelsea's in Alaska, and so we pray for uh, complete healing for her and for the surgeons and the other caregivers that they'll uh, have clarity of mind and be able to see what needs to be done and that uh, that uh, the Lord will guide the hands of the surgeon and, and all those who will care for Chelsea uh, in her recovery and also for her family who are driving back and forth to the hospital uh, quite a distance uh, because they have to take care of other family members so they're they're traveling back and forth and we just pray for safe travels for them and uh, that you'll quiet their minds and their fears and let them know that you're in charge. Also for Kim, who uh, has uh, multiple organ failure, she is also in Alaska, uh, is on, will be on a transplant list as of the first of the year. So uh, anyway, we need to get her there and then to make sure that she does get a, a transplant organ that she needs. Um, I believe that's a, a liver and uh, so uh, we'll lift Kim up t today. We've been praying for Maurice now for several weeks uh, here in Ohio. Uh, he, he had uh, open heart surgery and uh, uh, that uh, the, rec the heart surgery was successful but the recovery is not going well and he's been brought home on hospice. Uh, so we pray for Maurice and his wife Ruth uh, and the rest of the family. Uh, we know that uh, the Lord can do miracles, and if that's uh, his will, then we pray for that miracle. And, uh, and if not, that, uh, that uh, God will, will take him peacefully uh, into the next uh, phase of his life uh, it, with God in heaven. Um, we're going to pray for Harold in Florida, who's starting a new job this week, has started a new job this week, and uh, uh, we pray that uh, that will be uh, a, a good job and that it'll work out well for him. And uh, while we're mentioning Florida, we're going to pray for those on the east coast of Florida as uh, there's a tropical storm headed that way that has the potential of turning into a... Uh, hurricane so we need to lift them up uh, for safety for eastern Florida and and other parts of the state because it'll probably move across and uh, also uh, we had an election yesterday and uh, so we want to lift up those who were elected to office uh, that they will uh, serve faithfully in their offices, that they'll move our country forward in a positive direction, keeping in mind all those things that Jesus uh, told us to do uh, for caring for the sick, welcoming the strangers, uh, to uh, taking care of the widows, orphans, the children, the um, uh, you know, the mothers, uh, all, uh, all of those things. Uh, and uh, uh, we don't make we try and stay away from politics altogether but i think it's uh, it's the church's obligation to pray for elected officials everywhere uh, that they will that the decisions that they make would be decisions it's the old what would jesus do uh, and i think if they if they really look into their hearts and see the things that jesus uh, told us we should do 
hope that uh, they'll have a successful uh, run in their serving in their office. So, okay, we're going to move right into our prayer, and then we'll uh, go on to our scripture and then into the message for this evening. Will you bow with me in prayer? Lord, we uh, just thank you for your abiding presence. Uh, we know that you are the all-powerful, all-present, all-seeing Lord, the Creator, our Redeemer, and our friend. And today we lift up those concerns that we have just uh, spoken of in our uh, introduction to this prayer. And we also uh, take a moment to lift those things that are uh, joys and concerns that are in our hearts this evening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we uh, lift up those who are sick, those who are dealing with other trials in their lives, whether those are uh, medical, uh, physical, emotional, mental, uh, whether they involve uh, uh, quality of life issues, whether they involve security, whether they involve uh, uh, their families, their relationships, whatever that might be. Um, help those who are struggling to remember that you are never farther from them than their right hand, and that you are there thick and thin uh, with them, beside them, no matter where they are. And we just pray that this will bring comfort to them in their times of trial. And Lord, we uh, thank you for this beautiful fall that we've had with the, the colors all around us, uh, just magnificent fall that we've had uh, to show us, uh, remind us that uh, there's so much beauty before the transition to the grayness of winter uh, and uh, that we have spring to look forward to. And Lord, we thank you for family and friends. We thank you for uh, those who are willing to step out and try and lead our, our communities, our states, our country, and our world. And we pray for those leaders, that they will uh, make the choices to move away from violence, away from uh, hatred and mistrust, and toward those things that your son taught us to value and to perpetuate in our lives, things like love and helping and caring. And Lord, uh, we lift up other joys, the joys of family and friends, the joys of uh, good food that we have to eat, of the warm places we have to live. And, and we just thank you, Lord, for uh, all the many good things that you have uh, provided for us, uh, the many blessings that you have given us, and uh, just so many things we, we can't even name them all. And Lord, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who loved us enough to die for us, and who taught us these words to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to move right into our morning scripture and then on into our message. Our scripture for this evening is a, is a brief one, but a powerful one. It comes from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. So Micah chapter 6, verse 8. 
Know, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. These are the very words of God for the people of God, and your response is, thanks be to God. Well, our devotional message this morning is uh, entitled, Trampling Scorpions. What is our job as Christians? One of the things that I'm learning quickly in my studies, or learned quickly in my studies at seminary, is uh, how little I knew of Wesleyan theology and doctrine. Uh, not the least of which is that we have a doctrine. Uh, people for many years thought uh, people who followed Wesley uh, believed that you could believe whatever you wanted and still be a follower. I'm learning that that isn't any more true than believing the earth is flat. Uh, for instance, we believe here uh, at uh, Sanctuary Lakeside, like all Wesleyan churches, that in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, inseparable, one entity, we believe in the satisfying grace that is available to us through Jesus Christ's death for our sins and subsequent res resurrection. We also believe, unlike many folks these days, that you can't receive Christ's sanctifying grace outside the church, meaning that you can't just believe that God exists and be a good person and feel comfortable that you'll be finding a seat on the Paradise Express. We believe that church is the body of Christ. Jesus told us that. The Reverend Chris Bounds of Wesleyan uh, uh, theological seminary in Indiana says there's a strong consensus biblically and theologically that a person can't be a member of the larger church without being part of a concrete community of Christian faith and I would add that that, in, that is whether you are involved in a brick and mortar local church or a community such as this one that exists in the virtual world but seeks to make a difference for our world. In other words, to be a Christian means you have to be committed to Jesus Christ in a local community, or in this case, a worldwide community. When Christ was on earth, he was the primary vehicle for God's word to reach the people. Since his crucifixion and uh, rise from the grave and, and taking his seat with uh, God in heaven, um, local communities, the church, the, the local church, um, now takes that job. We have become the body uh, of Christ, the hands and feet through which God is working in our world through which Christ channels his saving and sustaining and sanctifying grace. The church is the instrument through which Christ's work is applied to human lives. That's why a Christian must be part of a congregation. To not be a part of a church is to risk cutting oneself off from God's sustaining and sanctifying grace. It's why the early church Fathers, beginning with Cyprian, said one cannot call God his father without calling the church his mother. Now, we don't believe that we're the only church that can do this. In fact, we believe that we're part of a greater church made up of other Christian churches, all working toward the same goal, and that is to bring people to Jesus Christ. We, we aren't thinking we're the only ones that can do that. 
Uh, and that brings us to the featured doctrine of the day. Our founder, John Wesley, uh, believed very much that we as individuals, as well as the church, should be carrying the message of salvation through Jesus Christ into the world. In fact, he believed this so much that he felt like we couldn't call ourselves a church unless we carried out the Great Commission to go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He didn't intend for us to sit all comfy in our padded pews every Sunday or in our padded recliners as we're watching virtual service online and then leave the church and say, well, I guess I'll see you next Sunday. Uh, in our scripture today, Jesus is sending out his disciples into the world. He didn't tell them to go and sit in the synagogue and wait for people to come to them and then preach to them like some uh, some of us do. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him, in other words, pray to God, to send more workers into the field. That's the scripture. Uh, uh, did you know for, that uh, for God's workers, there's no unemployment? He has plenty of work for everyone that we can round up. So don't feel like we have to do this by ourselves. And if you are enjoying our services and you're getting something out of this and you find it meaningful, please pass this along, share it, whatever you means you choose to let people know we're here. And uh, Jesus sent disciples into the world. Now, what's the part where he says, don't take anything with us? and don't stop and greet anyone on the road? Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Well, you see, he didn't want the disciples dilly-dallying around. They had a mission, and he expected them to get with it. In other words, he was talking more about idle conversation. Um, then what does he tell them? Be polite, accept hospitality, pray for their difficulties. And he didn't expect to do that alone. He told them to pray for helpers. He sent the disciples out two by two into the world. Did he expect the journey to be easy? No. He said, I'm sending you out as lambs among the wolves. Lambs? Wolves? Does that exactly sound like a walk in the park to you? The son of a friend of mine was running the Iditarod sled dog race, and he stopped for the night out at a cabin in the middle of nowhere. As he bedded his dog team down after feeding them, uh, he heard wolves howling in the distance. It wasn't long before his dog started howling and restless and barking and whining, and he opened the door of the cabin, and took out his hat-mounted uh, light, his headlamp, and shined it into the woods around him and gasped at what he saw when he saw dozens of pairs of eyes glowing back at him like hot coals from the underbrush. He said he grabbed his rifle, repacked his sled, and headed out into the night with his sled dogs uh, rather than leave them helpless tied up for the ravages of the wolf pack. Have you ever experienced anything in life like that? Have you ever seen those wolves staring back at you? Maybe it was a catastrophic illness. Maybe it was a family feud you experienced or a vicious attack from someone you thought to be a friend or the loss of someone close to you. So what did God promise his disciples for security? You can walk among the snakes and scorpions and crush them. Well, yeah, that's fine for snakes and scorpions, but what about those wolves? Seriously, in other words, we are safe in God's eternal presence. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. I promise you he will be there for you when you need him as the wolf pack begins to circle. Have you ever experienced God's presence? in a very difficult 
uh, situation in a very powerful way. You know that God is always around us, always present, but once in a while he comes to us in a way that is very special and unique. And when that happens, we need to be ready to accept him in a very different way. Several members of my family has had experiences. I've had experiences that way. Uh, my wife, who is also uh, our, is our associate pastor here at Sanctuary, uh, has experienced those kind of uh, uh, visits from God. And um, so uh, be ready for that especially when times become difficult. But we have to prepare ourselves for that. That kind of presence may only happen once in our lifetimes, and sometimes it happens in a very individual way, and we don't want to miss it. It's very real when it happens. I can assure you of that. God is very real. He's with us today. He's here in this place, both here in this studio and out there where you're sitting. And he's with us as we leave here to go about his business. One of the churches I filled in for uh, recently as pastor uh, had a sign as you went out the door that said, you are now entering the mission field. So as you as we end this broadcast this evening and you go out uh, into the world, either later this evening or tomorrow, uh, remember that you are the church in this world. You're setting an example for others uh, as a Christian, and you're ministering to others. We all have that call, not just us pastors. But we, uh, uh, God is very real. He's with us today in this place, and he's with us as we leave here to go about his business, but we'd better be about his business. That's our commission. That's our job. Our job as clergy isn't to do all the work in saving souls. It's to help you get ready so you can be one of those, and, and then we'll, stand, we'll all stand beside you. And as we see God's wonder unfold through us and our efforts, we should not lose sight of the greatest wonder of all, our heavenly citizenship. One of the things that we should keep in mind, and especially uh, those of us who are preachers, is that God works through us. The wonderful things we're able to accomplish are God's work. We're just his hands and feet and mouth. Many a great preacher has suffered a fall when they start to think it's all about them. That's something we can all learn from. So as we leave this place today, as we leave this virtual meeting this evening to go and crush some snakes and scorpions, maybe even a wolf or two, let's keep in mind that when we walk out of that door, our work given to us by God, our charge is to go into the world and witness for our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray with me. Lord, we thank you for uh, your trust that you have placed in us to be the hands and feet of your Son, to be the church in our world, to uh, be your light in a very dark and sometimes uncaring world. We pray that uh, you will give us the strength, the courage uh, to step out in faith and to be the church in the world, and then to give us the words to say and the actions to do uh, that will help us to be your light in our world. And we pray this all in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to move into our final hymn and then we'll be back for our benediction. Lord, the lights of your love be shining in the midst of the dark be shining. Jesus, lights of the world shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now bring. Flood the name. 
been a a true blessing having you here with us this evening. Uh, We hope that you found something in our devotion that touched your heart, that maybe helped you move a little bit closer to Jesus, and uh, and that's our goal. Uh, The main thing we uh, pray for every week is that you will find what you come seeking here with us uh, during our devotion. So, uh, Please accept this closing blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Remember, we love you and God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. We uh, uh, hope you have a great rest of the week, a safe and pleasant weekend, and that next week gets off to a great start for you, and that we'll see you back here next Wednesday evening, uh, right here at 7 o'clock, as always. Uh, And in the meantime, God bless.